the four great cults of the ancient era were the stellar cult, the lunar cult, the solar cult, and the cult of Saturn. Today's video is going to be about the stellar cult and the procession of the equinoxes. The zodiac is the name for the path of the sun among the stars. The ancients divided it up into 12 equal parts. Each of those parts consists of clusters of stars. The name zodiac is of Greek origin. The word zodiacos, which comes from zoon or animal. This is why the ancients named the clusters of stars after living creatures. According to Robert Hewitt Brown, who writes in the book Stellar Theology and Masonic Astronomy, the ancients believed the sun assumed the nature of or triumphed over each sign that it entered as it traversed its path among the stars. Examples Brown gives of this are the sun becomes a bull in Taurus and was worshipped by the Egyptians as Apis and by the Assyrians as Bel, Baal, or Baal. In Leo, the sun became a lion slayer. Hercules and an arch archer in Sagittarius. Under the sign of Pisces, he was a fish, hence Dagon, or Vishnu, the fish god, of the Philistines and the Hindus. The Roman Catholic Pope, to this day, wears a mitre hat that looks like a fish head, because it represents the fish god Dagon. When the sun enters the sign of Capricorn, it reaches the lowest southern destination, and after this it begins to rise upwards again, growing in light and heat as it does so. Therefore, the ancients believed that the sun, or Jupiter, was suckled by a goat. Hence, the sign of Capricorn is a goat. The virgin of the zodiac, Virgo, together with the moon, is where the female element of the mythological stories come in. Of course, the mythological fables are not about real beings, but to the profane they were. The uninitiated worshipped what they thought was a real Hercules and a real Jupiter. But those who were initiated into the mysteries knew that these were only allegorical and concealed profound astronomical truths. This was a secret that was known only by the priests and philosophers and initiates, who kept the rest of the people in the dark. This is how the priests of Egypt ruled the people with a despotic power, because there was a power differential between those who knew and those who did not know. Keeping the people in ignorance served their purposes well and allowed them to exercise total control over the population, especially through fear of what the gods or goddesses might do. Only those who were initiated into the mysteries were allowed to have the occulted knowledge. The people worshipped the sun, moon, and stars as gods, and if they would have had the true knowledge that the initiated had, this would, would have put an end to the control that the priest class had. This is why it was considered a terrible crime for a member of the priest class to permit this knowledge to be given to the masses. Because the priest class had esoteric knowledge of astronomy, they were seen to be able to foretell the future and known as prophets. With this knowledge, they could frighten and scare the people. The same is true in our modern era, because those who control things behind the scenes have the occult knowledge that the masses do not. But remember that in ancient times, books were rare and almost impossible to get, and some of the teachings were not allowed to be written down. Science was orally transmitted, and the allegories were meant to keep the secrets from those who were not meant to have them. In addition, symbolic representations were used for this purpose. In our day and age, however, we have no excuse. There is a plethora of information available to us at our fingertips, and it is there for us to find. But sadly, most people lack the will to seek it out because they're too busy being distracted by other things. In order to study and understand these ancient cults, it's necessary to have some background on what is called the procession of the equinoxes. The ancients were very aware of three basic celestial cycles or movements. The first is the fact that the earth rotates around the sun, and the path the sun follows is called its ecliptic. The second is that the earth rotates on its own axis. 
the third is that as the earth rotates on its axis it wobbles ever so slightly the sun's ecliptic or path crosses with another orbital path which is known as the celestial equator this makes it appear that the sun moves backward through each of the twelve signs of the zodiac this takes place very slowly as the sun moves backwards it then appears that the constellation signs are moving westward in the opposite direction all of this means that the sun moves through the twelve signs of the zodiac in a massive gigantic circle as it does this it seems the background of other stars is moving the other way due to the wobble of the axis of the earth the sun moon planets and constellations seem to move backward through the twelve zodiacal signs what does this mean for us if a person goes out every morning and watches the sunrise it appears the sun is moving slightly eastward just a few degrees charted over time the ancients realized that to go through each sign of thirty degrees it takes two thousand one hundred sixty years this means it takes the sun seventy two years to move one degree therefore it moves one degree in the average lifespan of a person that means the entire cycle lasts twenty five thousand nine hundred twenty years in all the journey is called by astrologers and astronomers the platonic year or the great year this means that in the occult 2160 is a very significant number the ancient adepts did not want this knowledge to be discovered by the uninitiated however so they used cover numbers to hide the esoteric meanings an example of this is the use of 666 christians are told this number is associated with the satanic however this is just a cover to keep occulted the sacredness of 2160 and its connection to astral theology the power elite and those who are in control know very very well all of this information that i'm talking about but they don't want you to know but it was well known to the stellar cult and the fact that pretty much all major religions grow out of astral theology why did they use the number 666 because six times six times six equals 216 of course and then you have the zero dropped if we multiply 2160 by six we get 12960 this is a number that is found encoded in almost all of the sacred megalithic structures and temples of the world why did the ancients do this to honor their deities while a processional year is 25,920 years, a processional day is 2,160 years long. This is again one degree every 72 years for a zodiacal sign of 30 degrees. Why is the concept of the procession of the equinoxes significant? The ancients knew that the earth itself has its own zodiac. In astrology, two important terms to understand are ascendant and descendant. Ascendant means rising sign, and descendant means the sign on the opposite side of the zodiac wheel. The earth has its own ascendant and descendant, just like every person has theirs. Right now, the astrological ascendant of the earth is in the last few degrees of the sign of Pisces. That means the descendant is in the exact opposite sign of Virgo. These oppositions were very significant to the ancients because there are positive and negative traits associated with each sign in the zodiac. The negative traits associated with the sign of Pisces are deception, vice, hidden agendas, mass delusion, and misuse of spiritual virtue and power. Hmm. Does that sound like what's going on right now, as we are in the very end days of the age of Pisces? Since we are moving into the age of Aquarius next, hopefully this means we will experience a paradigm change soon that will not favor these negative qualities. And that could be one of the reasons why the elites seem to be somewhat panicking now, because they know a change is coming. 
because every 2,160 years the sun enters a new sign of the zodiac. The religious traditions are then realigned to match the characteristics of that zodiacal sign. In the age of Virgo, the Great Pyramid was constructed. In the age of Taurus, the bull was worshipped. During the age of Aries, the ram was sacred. In the age of Pisces arose the eon of the Fisher King and the cult of Christianity. This is why Jesus was called a fisher of men. The fish sign that many Christians think stands for Jesus is actually an old symbol representing the age of Pisces. Soon we will be entering the age of Aquarius, which will be dominated by technology, science, and invention. In the New Testament, Luke 22.10 says, And he said unto them, Behold, when you enter into the city, there shall be a man meeting you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. The pitcher of water, of course, represents the sign of Aquarius, as it is a water sign. As the sun moves toward the final degrees of the previous sign as it moves backwards through the zodiac, the descendants of the great cults of power, who are at the helm of the religions and governments of the world, need to make arrangements for change. As each age terminates, the appointed mythographers have to get ready to script new mythologies that are consistent with the complex symbolism of the coming age. According to the research of Jordan Maxwell, the end of an age is always distinguished by orchestrated chaos. This is the meaning of the term Armageddon. Freemasons refer to this as order ad chaos or order out of chaos. Maxwell says as we move into the age of Aquarius, the goal of the controllers is to move us into a new world order. In the New Testament, Matthew 13 seems to anticipate this. It says, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. However, Jordan Maxwell says that's a mistranslation in the King James Version of the Bible, and what it really should say is not the end of the world, but the end of the age. And he gives numerous examples of where it says in the original scriptures, the age, not the world. So the Christians who believe that this is the end of the world are mistaken. They don't understand that the scriptures are talking about the end of the age of Pisces. As therefore the Tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world again, but it means the end of the age. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and who do iniquity and cast them into a furnace of fire. Obviously, again, the end of the world is not the end of the physical world, but the end of the age or the eon, and that's what the Mayas were talking about as well with the Mayan calendar. The ancients understood all of this esoteric knowledge, and this is why they used the divination arts and were involved in the art of prophecy. The tarot cards track the process of procession through all houses of the zodiac. The cards for the major arcana are thus like snapshots for each of the ages. Whoever designed the original idea of the tarot symbology tried to put 2,160 years of events and ideas into each card. In this way, the ancients preserved the esoteric knowledge. This is why the first card of the tarot is the magician, the magi, the enlightened one. And of course, over time, the tarot got corrupted and eventually became nothing more than a card game. And that is another topic. But the, the fortune tellers and people who read tarot cards of this day, many of them, probably most of them, have very little idea what the tarot is really all about. According to researcher Michael Desarian, the original motives of the great cults were very pure. The people who were part of these cults studied nature, and they had much reverence for living within nature. They believed live simply so others can simply live. Later on, unfortunately, all of the cults deteriorated and became corrupt, but originally they served nature and were one with all of their surroundings. The first of the great cults was the sidereal or the stellar cult. It was the cult that lasted the longest over 25,000 years. These people looked to the stars to figure out what God was all about. 
the prime symbol of the stellar cult was the serpent, and their symbol was the pentagram or star. Perhaps it is because they were the first to discover the mysteries of the stars. They had knowledge of high mathematics and were well schooled in the divination arts of astrology, tarot, and numerology. They left writings in stone which can be observed in the great capital cities of the West. In the stellar and lunar cults of Egypt, India, Ireland, and the world, women were seen during this time as equals and in fact were dominant in systems of government. They first invented the idea of divine justice and the importance of it in systems of government. They preserved the occult knowledge of the nature of the universe and human biology and procreation through myths and allegories. The ancient peoples who were the sidereolists included the early Semites, Indo-Aryans, Chaldeans, Teutons, and Celts. The Druids and the shamans of the Maya were also sidereolists. These people were the fathers of astronomy and the original Magi. They were the original wise ones of old, hence their prime symbol was the serpent. In the Christian scriptures, Jesus tells his followers to be ye as wise as serpents. To the ancients, the stars and the night sky represented all that is eternal and everlasting. On the other hand, when the sun rose, it blocked out the stars and they could no longer be seen. This is why to the sidereolist, the sun was called Lucifer, which means literally the sun of the morning. Because the rising of the sun blocked out the mystery of the stars and the night sky, he was thought to be obscuring the truth and the goddess. Hence, one of the symbols for the sun was the all-seeing eye for the god of light, and those who worshipped this god called themselves the illumined ones, or the illuminated ones. The stellar and later the lunar cults were ecocentric, egalitarian, and inclusive. This was the time of goddess worship when the role of women were dominant and women were revered. The goddess was the central deity and figure of society during this time. During the rise of the next great cults, the solar and Saturnian cults, this was reversed. During that era, the role of women was much diminished and the goddess was made subservient to the all-powerful male god. She became only his consort during the rise of those cults. In some cases, she was cast even into the role of temptress, seducer, and femme fatale. The changeover from an ecocentric and matrifocal paradigm to an anthrocentric and hegemonic one had grave consequences for human psychology. This was the turning point which catapulted us into the age of left brain, rational, aggressive thinking, and away from a right brain, intuitive type of cognition. Humans thought of themselves at that point as separate from nature instead of one with it. The stellar and lunar cults had as their symbols the dragon and or the serpent, and these were subsequently after that time demonized. In the next video, I will talk about the lunar cult, which is the worship of the moon.